It's your boy Hustle Man Mike. We on Hustle Man TV, y'all love the hustlers. Today we got a very, very special guest for y'all. One of my close partners, one of the men running the city right now with this fool shit. Go on here, let them know who he is. Sneak. Sneaky Eats. Y'all know I've been out here for a little while, but it's my dog. This has been one of my supporters for the longest, bro. It ain't nothing like, oh, let me reach out to him. Nah, bro. He been shopping with me. Never asked for no discounts. None of that. That's my boy in real life. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, man, y'all know everything on this show, y'all gonna see it real and authentic. I, I ain't share the bloggers. I ain't gonna tell niggas to say that. I show y'all the receipts. So, like I told y'all, man, on this show, everything is authentic. Everybody y'all that seen on the show, that y'all gonna see on the show. I'm not paying nobody to come talk to me. I don't need no company that bad. You know what I'm saying? But nah, so, as y'all can tell, today's video is a work in progress. It's a little rough and it's a little rusty, but we've been blessed. We've been gifted with the honor. My boy Sneaky East has called us out to where we sitting at right now. Let them know where we sitting and where you get it from, man. This is the Sneaky Eats food bus. All blood, sweat, and tears. It was pretty much, I stripped everything down in here by myself or whatever because um I went to this guy and he was like, yeah, bro, I can uh, strip it for you, but it's going to be $2,000. And I'm thinking, why would I pay somebody $2,000 when I can come out here and do it myself? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, man, I went and got that grinder right there, this drill, and I just started breaking everything down, man, because I don't know if y'all know about buses or these particular type of buses, but they had the, I believe it's flame retardant, like, stuff all over. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, of course, you had the non-slip and the grease and whatnot. But, yeah, man, we broke all that down because, um, um, it was a leak in the back, so when that leak, it kind of rusted one side of it. So we pretty much got to replace this old side of the wood, but besides that, bro, like it's a work in progress, and when we get it going, it's going to be where it needs to be at. So, man, like I heard, work in progress. So not only did he cook with them hands, and them for God giving. You know what I'm talking about? But he also feels, you know what I'm saying? So that is really dope, man, because you not only finna cook the food, they gonna eat something that you built This literally what you've been doing with your brain. That's what I was trying to strive for. As far as that, bro, like, it's, it's a little more personal with me now because I actually went through the process because I, I drove all the way to San Antonio because a lot of food trailers come out of San Antonio because it's close proximity to Mexico or whatnot. They do a lot of them down there, man, and I just saw the different things. Like, the dude was trying to charge me $1,500 for a fryer but I found the same prior for seven hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was just little stuff like that that made me think about why won't I just build this myself? And of course, YouTube University, everything <laughs> you need to know is on YouTube. So we basically doing it step by step. But we taking our time and we gonna yeah. go. You know what I'm saying? We are gonna do it that way. Now reverse the process, trust the process. You did exactly. So with that being said, man, let me know how long have you been cooking? Cause me personally, I've been rocking with sneak for at least five years. It's been about five years, maybe a little longer. Definitely five but years. No, how long have you been doing? Man, we started November 2014. I was working at this catering company, and it was basically they catered for millionaires and stuff like that. So. Um, the dude, it was a, a chef that hired me, and then it was another manager that he didn't have no type of experience with it. So me and him clashed. So he fired me. So I said, boom, you know what? I went in there and I took my last check, and I said, I'll never work for nobody ever again, bro. And I haven't had a job since 2000, since 2014, November 2014. That last check I got from them, and they cut my hours short, it was $325. Supposed to be $1,200, $325. And I took that, and then I bought the first couple things that I needed for Sneaky Eats, and we've been rolling ever since. Yeah, I see bosses on the hang with bosses, man. Like I told y'all earlier, like I told y'all about a month ago, I quit my job, I'm giving it my all, because I literally hang with nothing but entrepreneurs and business, man. You know what I'm saying? Gotta be so up. with that being said, so you quit your job, you put y'all into it. We gonna get, get y'all heard he used to cook for millionaires. We gonna get into his clientele and his celebrity base, but... I want to know because all I see you post is you and you and Club go a relationship. <laughs> all right, man. Club God, B King, that's my fucking dog, bro. Um, him and my other cousin, C Sharp or whatever, them niggas pretty much raised me because I was 13, 14, 15 in the studio with them niggas back before they even was relevant, bro. They was just dropping CDs, dropping CDs, wasn't getting no buzz, none of that or whatever. And I was always the young nigga under them at the time or whatever, and then um, he started getting a buzz. When he started getting a buzz, I was in the Navy, so I was gone and shit like that. Okay. When I came back, my nigga a superstar and shit like that. So 
You know what I'm saying? It got to the point where it was just me, him, and my cousin, and a couple other niggas who was doing shows and shit like that. I wasn't never, never rapping or nothing, but I was always the nigga that was there. You know what I'm saying? We got eyes on everything because you already yeah. know this our bread winner. We mm-hmm. got to make sure he's straight before anything and shit like that. And um, me and him, we had fell out in like 2013, but then we we squashed that shit and we've been thick and steeds ever since. Like it ain't never, you know what I'm saying? Nothing ever happened, but it's that's my dog, bro. Like he um. He doing, and I tell people this, it's crazy you brought that up, bro. Um, I tell people this, I map my whole strategy after that nigga, bro, because he had this big ass banner of his face in the studio and shit like that. I went and got the same banner, but I kiss you know with my logo and shit on it. Sneaky I got, logo. I got the same one. Uh, when he really wasn't getting a big buzz in, in Houston and shit like that, he was going to other cities and other towns and shit like that. As y'all know, that's what I do. I travel, you know what I'm saying? We gonna get to Yeah, it. that's what I'm saying. I'll be in and yeah. out. But, like, shout out to that nigga, bro, because I, I, I mapped a lot of my whole grind after him. He know that shit. I done told him that a couple times. Yeah, so, once again, man, like I said, this is a more personal interview for me because I do know him on a personal level. I've been following the brand. So, we gonna get some cooler commentary right quick. Who started the funny shirts? Because I know that's what y'all know. Uh, <laughs> who, who, who started the shirts? Again, bro, I got that from that nigga. Because, okay. um... When we used to be at the shows and shit like that, he he had a plug. This nigga would never show who his shirt plug was, bro. So, um... When I had got out the Navy, you know what I'm saying? That's why when I was clubbing, nigga, we was in Roxy's on Wednesdays, Matrava's on Thursdays, Toledo's on Fridays, Carol, Carol's on Saturday, bro. Every week, we ended up, um, I found this girl, and she hooked me up with uh, this dude named Team Toss. I don't know if y'all heard of Toss or whatever. Nah, we ain't heard of Team Toss. Yeah, Toss used to do all my shirts and shit like that, and then I used to just find other people, but that was a attention getter. When you walk <laughs> in the club and a female will see something that your shirt say, you don't even have to do nothing. Hey, man, they had some raunchy shirts, and that's that funny because he ain't your regular business, man. Like I see a lot of people I've seen on the show are really hands-on. That's how I got him on the show for me to be an up-and-coming show. He's really hands-on with his customers and his clientele. So he posted some of his memorabilia and some of his old throwback memories, and he loves to share them with his fan base. So that's why I bought up the whole shirt thing, because as y'all know, Club Lord, you remember King, that shit, dog. Man, you just put a post up. Oh, man, I want to say about two or three days ago. Man, he, man, them shirts said some outlandish things. Oh, wow. All the new streets, bro. And- I ain't even forgetting them tour stories, cause yeah, yeah, bro. yeah. We look, man. We ain't here to do no rap. Yeah, 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 bro. We here to talk about the food. So, like he said, he modeled his whole his whole sneaky eats career based off his people. So, what other mentors do you have before we go more in depth into the food? Um, like we spoke, your twin, uh, Weed X. <laughs> He's somebody I really looked up to when it came to the cooking and whatnot. Just cause I'm gonna tell you what happened. I promise to God, bro, I can't make this up. We was in New Orleans for, uh, I had an event for a Super or whatever, and we just so happened to be in Weed X. He ran in, and as soon as he ran in, he didn't go to the back. He was shaking everybody's hand, talking to people, like mopping, sweeping, doing everything. Like, this the big dog, this the yep. boss. And he ended up humping, like, you know what I'm saying? He, he getting paid minimum wage. So when I seen that, bro, I was like, you got to leave from the front. Mm-hmm. I can't stand back and be like, oh, you got to do this, you got to do that. So I just, it was him. Definitely Corey from Burns Barbecue. That's somebody else who I'm real, real, real linked in with, bro. Like, he always supported me. Burns always supported me, but it's been plenty of times, like, I've been kind of needing advice and stuff like that, and I go to him. He'll always have, what, oh, Sneak, you need to do this, you need to do that. You know what I'm saying? And, of course, Super. She pretty much was the first celebrity that um, gave me, I think, like, she shouted me out. I made her some pasta. I think I got, like, 5,000 followers off her. Cause before I even started Sneak Eats, I had like twenty five hundred. I was a popular nigga back yeah. in the day, so it kind of translated. Yeah, twenty five hundred, yeah. five, five, ten bro. years ago, meant something. Yeah, 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 bro. But then shit, when she shouted me out, then Tokyo shouted me out. It was just a snowball effect, and then it was just different celebrities I was cooking for and whatnot. So, but I don't, I don't too much be trying to chase behind celebrities yeah, no more, bro. Not. Cause it's it's hit or miss. So. It's, it's either here or there, bro. So, before we get to talking about Sneaky East Ward Tour, he's the first restaurant I know to do a Ward Tour. And it's crazy, yeah. but let's talk about the food, man. You're known for your gumbo. Me, personally, my favorite Sneaky Eats is the Punch. Hey, man, he makes some of the coldest. Only other Punch <laughs> make, hey, only other Punch make I know y'all is my old man at Big Hugs Food Shake. 
Hey, Sneaky got some of the coldest punches in the city, man. So let's talk about your signature dishes, your gumbo, your punch. What else you what else are you known for? Or you feel that you're known for? I I went on this tear to where I was just creating stuff that nobody else could do, like the fried oxtail, the cornbread waffle. Um, when I did the pasta, the um, I did a, a turkey wing pasta, and I took the meat from turkey neck and made pasta with it. But it's like. It's like one of them things, bro. I try to think outside the box. Like, you don't know too many black dudes that do short fried rice and stuff like that. That's one of my signature dishes. You're supposed to cook that today, Hey, y'all. listen. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long, long day, so you know what I'm saying. I dropped the ball with that. Next time we on, we definitely gonna have the shrimp fried rice or whatever. But I got from my signature sneaky nachos, my sneaky stuff, potatoes, my Cajun lasagna, like and of course you said like the gumbo and whatnot. And I do some mean shrimp and grits. Like okay, my shrimp and grits is different because. Certain people, if you don't eat their grits within the first twenty minutes, you finna eat a yeah, um, they finna lock up. Yeah, it's gonna be concrete. Yeah, how can pull? <laughs> my my grits gonna be good for at least two days. How you know what I'm saying with a recipe? And I got another chef. Me and him, me and him, kind of went back and forth. Not in a bad way, but we we was kind of throwing each other pointers. He was like, "Hey, bro, well, you know, if you stretch it out with this, it'll do this." And yeah, so it's just one of them things, bro. Like we had to kind of lock in with that to get the right recipe. So. It's cool, you know what I'm saying? There's a couple of chefs that I deal with on a daily basis in Houston, bro, but for the majority, I'll just be. So, you know, in the city right now, and, and like I said, man, we got we got a hell of an interview lined up for y'all, man. We we got at least an hour of content, but can we expect your sneaky shrimp and grits on Sundays on the bus for brunch? Listen, the shrimp and grits, yeah, that's cool, man. We're going to have the chicken and waffles, but my waffle ain't going to be like everybody else's waffle. Everybody else just do a regular... Pancake batter waffle. My waffle either gonna be made out of yeast rolls or it's gonna be made out of cornbread. I was the first person to do a cornbread waffle. Like nobody did it before me. Like I got so many different. I'm like a rapper, bro. Like I, I got, I got, I got. You like an evil genius in the kitchen. What I'm, that's what I'm saying, bro. Like it's when I when I when I get the bubbling, like I be listening to Wayne or whatever. I listen to a lot of Lil Wayne when I want to create or whatever. So every time I I drop let the well I, I listen to let the beat build, I always drop something new. It hey, never that's a fails. classic. It never fails, bro. Man, hey, look, and this ain't got shit to do with this, like Wayne told y'all, but I thought that I should mention. Man, hey, every time I heard them when that album first came out, I was probably eight or nine when he dropped it. It was probably my favorite song on that album. Yes, bro. <laughs> the whole hard ass mixtape. Oh, yeah. shit on that yeah. So, like I said, he 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 does a food tour, but before we get into the food tour, let's talk about how you got your food worldwide and the steps that you had to take and the adversity you faced dealing with the shipping company you chose. This okay, I tell people this all the time. You have chefs that'll reach out to me and be like, hey, I see that you ship food. How do you ship food? First of all, it's not easy. I lost about $17,000, like, over the last two and a half, almost three years, dealing with FedEx. Because once a perishable item goes bad, they don't replace a perishable item or whatnot. Okay. And the, the system that I developed, if it's over, if it's, if they do they if they do their job, it'll be perfect. But, of course... FedEx like to play soccer, soccer with your hockey, with your packages or whatever. I got two or three fragile stickers. I got glass rolled all over it. Fragile this, fragile that. Perishable, you know what I'm saying? Time, you know what I'm saying? Time sensitive, all that. They don't care. But I used to work at FedEx. That's what I'm saying. I used to work at UPS, so I know. <laughs> I know. So, but long story short, it's, it's, it was all about testing the market. And I'll be like, hey, do I have any customers in Buffalo, New York, or whatever? And they'll be like, oh, yeah, we up here. How do we get some food? And they'll DM me, and then we'll ship it, man. That first year, the trial and error, man, I shipped 445 packages, and I had to reship 200 of them or whatever. And the average price of them packages, not the food, not the supplies, not not whatever I was putting in there. The actual just shipping by itself was anywhere from thirty to fifty dollars. So think about all them times I had to reship that like over and over. The food gone, so the food costs that the shipping costs and the supply costs. So I was having to do it double or whatever. That's why I don't ship as much now. But I'm about to start bringing it back because it always works better in the colder months. Okay, okay. So like he just said, he got he got a fan base all the way in Buffalo, New York. Oh, with that being said, man, how far does your reach reach? 
and oh. using Instagram or the uses oh. that you can't use on Instagram anymore, how has it affected your business? Instagram is a gift and a curse. Because right now my page is shadow banned. So everybody that normally, you even said you don't see my posts like you used to or whatever, but everybody that used to see my posts, man, I got customers that didn't hit me all the way up in the United Kingdom. I shipped to people in Canada and whatnot. And then I had a guy, um, he hit me, he was in Johannesburg, South Africa or whatever. Said, man, how much would it cost to, to get something shipped over here? And I was telling him, bro, it's going to be a little bit more expensive because we're going to have to do a one-day flight. You know what I'm saying? So that's and it's going to be expensive, but I couldn't really do it. But like I said, Instagram is a gift and a curse because, and I had to learn this the hard way when I got shadow banned, you kind of have to have another outlet to get to your customers or whatever, because like it was, remember a couple months ago when Instagram was down, everybody was on Twitter, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So. I couldn't make no money that day. Yeah. This was the majority of my advertising. It's free advertising, but the same thing, if my customers can't see that I'm cooking, I'm fucked. Yeah. So we um we got a we actually um we building an app right now. The app is gonna coincide with the bus dropping, whatnot. So um it'll be easier for people to be like, oh well, let me just go ahead and see what sneak cooking today. All right, y'all. So yeah, I just heard him say he go all the way to Africa with this fool shit, man. Boom, it's your boy Sneaky Eats. We on my bus right now. Well, we in the process of building this bus right now. Stay tuned, because we got a long journey ahead of us, but it's going to be a strong journey. Let's go. And like I said, this is a genuine conversation between really two partners. But I'm going to offer y'all, not, not just for myself, but for his fan base as well, Hustle Man TV will be an open avenue forever for Sneaky Eats and any of his fan base or anybody who supports or follows Sneaky Eats or you need an avenue as well. We're going to give y'all updates on this bus. That's for shit show guaranteed. Yes. Oh. Yes. We, we, me and him talked about it. We will do... I ain't going to call it a vlog. Because I ain't going to necessarily be vlog. What's we'll that is exclusive content that's going to be on Hustle Man TV that you ain't going to be able to find nowhere else? Because... <laughs> right thing. I have a YouTube platform, but I don't have the time, like... I'm still running my business. I'm full-time father. And we building this truck. This is my homeboy, newest venture. You know what I'm saying? This is his lane. So it, it it's more conducive for him to have the content of actually seeing the bus come together. Because y'all see, this is basically the skeleton right now. In the next six to seven months, this is going to be a full-fledged restaurant. That's how I'm looking at it. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a food truck. But the whole process of it being built, you're going to see the majority of it on his YouTube platform. So y'all need to make sure y'all subscribe when it's up and running all the way how it's supposed to be running. So we we ain't rushing you. But yeah. can we get a possible date of 2022 see, when, when, when you want? See, and this is the thing, bro. Before I even posted that I had this bus, I was like, oh, yeah, we... We, we breaking it down 2021, we building up 2022 and 2023, we hitting the streets. Okay. I told myself that that's giving me too much time and that's going to give me time to BS. Mm -hmm. But if I set myself to a strict schedule of summer 2022, I got to be on the ball. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So we hopefully looking at August 2022. It all just depends on if I'm able to get the uh, the different uh, like supplies and stuff because as y'all know, lumber and steel right now is pretty much taxing through the roof. Man, what ain't taxing? Exactly, but we, like this pretty much, it got good wood in it except just one little part that we got to replace. But besides that, man, once we get that steel in here, man, we, we gonna be, we going to the moon after that. So y'all, we, we have a shelf in the building. Before we get into our next subject, let's talk about food costs. How has this pandemic food cost Shit, spike bro. changed your business? Let me give y'all um <laughs> Let me give y'all a uh Let me give y'all I'm I'm gonna give y'all a um an easy comparison, right? To make gumbo for a hundred people last year will cost me like four hundred and twenty dollars. And that's my full 32 ounce containers with the rice and the punch and everything. That same Hundred pack batch of gumbo is around six seventy five right now. Yesterday's price is not today's price. Easily, like that's what I spent this morning making the gumbo because I've now in incorporated Kate, Katie into my run, so now I'm averaging like a hundred plates and stuff a day now. You know what I'm saying? I'm at max capacity, but it's like everything is up. Everything is up. Yeah, bro. Like, trust me, I know. <laughs> like uh. I bought some lobster tails, like the case, the case used to be $150 for a case, and it used to be like 25 lobster tails, bro. Matter of fact, never mind lobster tails, oxtails, 
Yeah, yeah. Ox sales, bro. I was hoping he hit it. Listen. <laughs> Farmer Fresh. I used to buy oxtails. A 15 pound case was $75.99. Now, a 10 pound case is $120. So you took out five pounds and you added, you know what I'm saying, from 75 to 120. But man, we had to know that it was going to be consequences of the pandemic yeah. or whatnot. Like, people that don't know politics, they blaming Joe Biden. Hey, I'm not a Joe Biden fan, but. I understand that all these companies are trying to recoup all that revenue that they lost last year. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, man, costs are definitely up right now. Everything's up right now, like you said. Man, everything. So, I went ahead and asked it because, I, I, like I said, I got a culinary background myself. And y'all see from just my videos I do at home when I'm mukbanging by myself, the price of food has changed drastically. But let's talk about your world tour now. What are some of your favorite cities in here? What are some of your best Now you're finna put me on the spot, bro, because I don't <laughs> have these people cussing me out, dog. Right. They ain't gonna cuss you out. Let me tell them hustle hard. All right. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me break this down, dog. Okay. As far as my favorite market, because it's the easiest and they always show up no matter what, Dallas, Texas. It don't matter, bro. Like, Dallas, Dallas, swear they, they swear I'm from Oak Cliff, bro. Like, cause they, it doesn't matter, bro. I'm selling out. But the best market that I've been to, oh. if you don't want to look, we ain't gonna I'll, make y'all top three. I'll so be y'all top three. We'll take them in no set order. Jacksonville, Florida. Okay. I just love Jville. It's so much love in Jville, dog. Like I love Jville. DC, DC, Chocolate City, bro. Like it's it's nothing but our people there, bro. Like it's, okay. it's it's love in DC. The Motor City, Motown. That's Detroit. Oh shit! Look, you fucking up, bro. <laughs> You took it up. <laughs> That's the fun part. But Detroit, Detroit, I fuck with Detroit too. I was out there too. They show love in Detroit. And the fourth one, it got to be a tie between Philly and Chicago. More leaning towards Philly than Chicago because Philly, man, and it's crazy. I don't know no better, nigga. I was on Broad Street. I don't know if you know about Philly, nigga. That is, that is the hood, bro. Okay. Like, that's the trap. So, niggas was like, man, what, boy, you know where you at right now? I was like, nah, but shit. The thing is, I'm not saying I can't get touched, I can't get robbed, but I show so much love when I come to these cities, bro. I have my head down, and I show love and respect to everybody around there because I used to be abrasive, bro. Like, I used to be, like, when I used to go to Dallas, and I, I'd say something like, oh, all the chefs still y'all trash or whatever. Some, some stupid yeah. ass shit like that. You can't do that, bro. Yeah, and you had like, to humble yourself. You know, I had to humble myself, bro. Like, you got to show respect wherever you go. So, man, I'm always showing love when I go to these other cities. I'll be reaching out to other chefs like, mm -hmm. hey, bro, I want to shop with you when I come to the city and yeah. shit like that, bro. Just It ain't even about me stepping on toes and then like that, bro. It's just more along the lines that I appreciate y'all even allowing me to come up here and trap. Yeah. Like, when I was in Chicago, y'all know Chicago War, like World War Three right now. Yeah. But everywhere I went in Chicago, I was, I ain't going to say I was good. But I was straight, you know what I'm saying? Because I had a nigga, he was in the trenches out there or whatever. He, hey, Sneak, you good? Come over here. No. <laughs> but um, it, it was cool, bro. Like, I fought I with Detroit. L.A. was cool. New York was dope. Orlando was dope. Man, everywhere, everywhere is pretty much dope, bro. I've never had a bad experience going to, the, to a city. Except the second time in New York because the Airbnb we got, the stove was this big. So look, we finna get into that. We no gonna... exaggeration, bro. The stove was this big, but besides that, man, I love New York, bro. But the traveling thing, man, um, it goes on, goes along with not being stagnant. I don't want to mm -hmm. be in one spot all my life, so that's why I like to travel and go to other places and stuff like that. We really prepping. Like I got to go to Dallas this weekend, but man, I, I gotta get Phoenix, dog. Like Phoenix is. I didn't know Phoenix and Houston are. Mm -hmm. Third and fourth, or fourth and fifth, when it comes to largest cities or whatever, like yeah. you know, it's like New York, whatever, New York, L.A., Chicago, Houston, and Phoenix, I believe, if, if I'm not mistaken. So, them demographics, bro, I gotta capture them. Like, I gotta have that. Hey, say man, once again, it's your boy Hustle Man Mike right here on Hustle Man TV. Today we have Sneaky Eat on Sneaky's Food Bus in the building. Let them know who he is. Easy day, easy way. It's your boy Sneak, Chef Sneak, whatever you want to call me. Tapped in with my dog Hustle Man TV or whatever, and I hope y'all enjoy this journey. We about to take y'all on. Sneak then talked about his war tour. Now you give something, and like he said, he shadow banned it. We're so sad. Hey, we're gonna we're gonna figure out another way. Hopefully, I get the algorithm. But let's talk about the other options and the other things you offer to your clientele and your fan base. The sneaky eats treats and how you how you traveling worldwide and bringing treats. At. And man, this is the thing. Um, you was exotic pop before exotic pop. Hey, listen, listen, bro. This is the thing. 
I have anxiety, right? So I got to have sweets and stuff in my little nightstand because if I'm having a panic attack in the middle of the night, they calm me down or whatever. So I'm always on the lookout for it. It's natural to me to, and I be in the store so much, I'll spot something new that don't even say it's new on the box or whatever. So the first couple of times I was doing it, people was like, man, you really baby deal with the snacks. You always find the 2000, the year 2000 yeah. snacks and stuff like that. And it got to the point, bro, like, where I just made a hashtag and that hashtag is like over 100 posts and that it's just different stuff. I, I just always seem to be in the right place at the right time, but now everybody want to be on a snack craze and people going so far as to, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with it, but they ordering snacks that they know they can't get over here just mm-hmm. to kind of compete, but I just be doing it naturally, bro. Like, and people ask me all the time why I don't, I can't bake. Like, shout out to all the bakers out there because if you a baker, you a thousand times better than any chef, regular chef, bro. Like, I can just throw a whole bunch of seasonings and stuff in, in something and it's going to taste amazing. Yeah. With a bacon, it got to be precise, bro. Like, you have you gotta to be a recipe. Measurements, bro. Yeah. Like, I can't bake for nothing. So, that's why, like, um, with the snacks and stuff like that, oh, even on the bus, I'm going to have my homegirl. She's going to do all my treats or whatever. And it's, I don't, I'm not sure if I'm going to give them away free or whatever or it's going to come... At a cost, bro, but we have so much going on that's gonna go in this bus, bro. Yeah. I got another homeboy. We're gonna have a margarita machine on this bus and whatnot. Okay. And I told him, this is my dog. Like, I don't want no profit from you yeah. or whatever, nigga. From it's, your it's, it's, it's whatever you make off, but that's what you make because you expanded my business because, oh, yeah, man, you can go to Sneak, you can get this. They're gonna come that. wherever Decker is, exactly. but then they gonna see he got some fat ass wings or, man, she look cool today. Exactly. I wanna call Decker, but I wanna be warm with the Sneaky exactly. Gumbo. Exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly, bro. <laughs> uh, man, how we got a picture, bro? Like, I really wanna park this and have like a whole pavilion with the little fans out and whatnot. So even when it, on a hot ass day, when you under the pavilion, it feel like you own. On a, on a, just in Georgia somewhere on like, like just getting a summer breeze or whatever with the music and stuff out there and man it's just it's just a vision that I have in my head bro when everything comes to fruition it's gonna be everything yeah. that I need it to be yes sir yes sir I heard that when it comes to fruition you know what I'm saying faith is dead without works I think that's what the good book says <laughs> so it's something, something along that line but now let's talk man let, we, we talked about your roots being from the age and how you kind of got started here but let's talk about the full scene within the city, because you finna make a, you already make a big impact. Mm-hmm. You finna make a bigger impact with this bus. Uh, we already spoke off camera about the things going on in the food industry with some of the other big names, uh, not even competition, but some yeah. of the other co-parts. Yeah, yeah, your yeah, counterparts yeah. that's doing their thing. And let, let's just talk about black business in the city. And, and, I, I, and this, this is what I tell people, bro. I travel all over the country, dog. And I tell people, Houston really has the best food in the whole country, bro. I, you can't tell me I'm lying, bro. Like I didn't been everywhere. I didn't been to Chicago. I didn't been to New York. I didn't been. I been there or whatever. But it's so much of us here. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm, let me stop lying. <laughs> Lafayette, all down there. Lafayette, Karen Crow, Baton Rouge, and whatnot. They probably got a little more Cajun. You know what I'm saying? But I'm bringing that Cajun to Houston. And then you got a lot of people out here that's claiming that Creole and that Cajun shit and they really don't got it like that or whatever. But you also got people like me. You got people like my homeboy from uh, Fat Boys Catering. That's my dog. Crack Kitchen. Meals by Mail. That's my dog. That's my little homie or whatever. And my other girl, homegirl, but she ain't really been cooking like her uh, Shan to go. Man, we got so many people that really cook from the heart. Like, I care about the money, but I'm more worried about what my customer thinks. Um... So I always tell people, man, if this is your first time, man, please let me know feedback, positive or negative. I don't yeah. care, you know what I'm saying? And it's been plenty of times that somebody will be like, hey, well, this is good, but I'm used to this just right here or whatever. And then they'll say, don't change what you're doing because mm-hmm. of me, you know what I'm saying? So you kind of got to find that balance between, okay, do I need to try to accommodate this customer or should I just keep my recipe the same that the mass is like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? But I'm thankful for them type of customers because they they – make me keep an open head about, you know what I'm saying, just with, with everything and whatnot. So, yeah. And he's one of the people that's going to actually respond. He ain't going to give you no dry, okay, thank you. Hey, man, this dude will send you a meme. This dude will... I mean, all that. <laughs> hey, he'll crack a joke with you. If you tell him that your kids in the house fighting over sneaky punch, he's going to say, send a video. Let me I'm see. I'm posting it. I'm <laughs> posting it. See, and cause I had to do that because... I had to kind of repair my image a little bit because for the longest, bro, like, like I said, I battle um, anxiety and depression and whatnot. 
I didn't have patience mm-hmm. at all at first. You know what I'm saying? Like I was quick to either not respond or kind of be kind of snippy with customers and shit like that. You can't do that. No. Okay. Even 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 when they if they if the customer is dead wrong, you still gotta kind of be above the fray a little bit. So I'm still a work in progress when it comes to that or whatever. So by me, like you said, interacting with the customers or posting the memes or doing all that, I'm showing them I'm human just like them. Yeah. And my the old me, the the the, the short tempered, the the more aggressive sneak, he's not here anymore type shit. Yeah. So well with him changing and doing that, the one thing I kudos him on is his communication. If the orders for the day running late, Depending on how many orders he got, he either shoot a text and say, hey, y'all, I'm running late. Or he even post, hey, y'all, I'm running behind. He he gonna always communicate the meetup locations. Y'all just heard, he's all the way in Katy now. He used to meet Greens Point Mall for the north side, Carol's for the south side. Now, where do you meet your Katy customers at? At Walmart in the parking lot. But that's the thing, I will say that as far as being late, 90% 90% of the time, if I'm late, that's because somebody else was late getting to the meeting spot and I got to wait on them before I can even leave and go to the next spot. If everybody was there on time like we supposed to be, well, I can't blame them because yeah. if I go off and blame them for being late, that'll be the time, oh, I'm running late and I, mm-hmm. I'm leaving the house. So it's a slippery slope, bro. That's why I try not to harp on people. And I, I be giving them like a 15 to 20 minute grace period, bro. But when I tell them I got to go, I got to go. Yeah, yeah. So we, we spoke a little bit about it, but let's talk about the hometown curse, man. All my guests, for the most part, have been from Houston, so I always want to ask everybody the, the biggest narrative for all cities, not just Houston. Atlanta say Atlanta don't support Atlanta. Houston say Houston. Most people say they city don't support me. With a man like you being so well-traveled with your business, how do you feel about the hometown curse? As far as with the hometown curse, bro, I tell people, when if you're a chef or whatever business that you're doing, and in your hometown or in your city, you feel like you're not getting the demand or the sales. It's because they feel like, man, sneak right down the street. I can get him anytime I want. Mm-hmm. But you got to think, if 20 people are thinking like that, then that's 20 orders I'm not going to get. Yeah. So you got to give people a little bit of the, um, you know how they say absence make the heart grow fonder or whatever. Yeah. So I, I remember it took a point where I didn't cook in Houston for like two or three months. Just to the for the demand to build back up, it got to a point where I was traveling every weekend, bro. Every weekend, always gone, and people started saying, "Oh, damn, stick, you just forgot about Houston." No, I didn't forget about Houston. It's just yeah, I got too comfortable. I had to go to where the support was at, and I don't fault Houston for not always supporting because they can get me any time, and that's that's just what it is. But Detroit, Michigan can't get me every time because I only been there once. L.A. I only been there once. You know what I'm saying? Jacksonville, I only been there twice. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's one of them things. Hey, I don't know when Sneak coming back. So let me go spend a hundred dollars with him over the course of a weekend or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Which I very much appreciate. But it, it it's picking back up in Houston. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, my worst year was 2019, and I just posted something about that in my story, bro. I couldn't get a sale. I barely was getting like 20 places in a week, bro. And this this goal from somebody that was doing hundred plates a day yeah. to twenty to twenty plates in a week, but like it was bad, dog. Like you know, I really like financially, like everything was bad, dog. But that just goes to I tell people all the time in business, you're gonna have mountain peaks and you're gonna have valleys. You need to have the same attitude that you had in the valley that you had that you had on the mountain peak because you will eventually get out of that valley, bro. Well, if you got that in your head, you will be just fine. But don't let the hometown curse have you thinking that oh nobody wants to support me it's not that they don't want to support you they just feel like they they don't have to support you right now because you here yeah. i'll get you anytime i want so you got to become a stranger which is nothing wrong with that so you got to be a stranger sometime when you're at home man Getting to our last to- topic we sneak for the day because like i said this is an ongoing this is just i ain't gonna call this part one because there will be multiple parts to today's encounter but this is the beginning of the sneaky bus tour you know what i'm saying can we see this bus on the road after it gets established in the city but that's the thing this is only gonna be a Houston exclusive thing. Like, I'm not taking yeah, I know the bus. I love exclusive. Yeah, yeah, I'm not taking the bus outside of Houston because I don't want to put them highway miles on it because we get rental cars and whatnot and we drive. Put it this way, I put 2,600 miles on a car this weekend going to Jacksonville and back and whatnot. And you gotta think this is a bus. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is a big boy motor. <laughs> Man, that gas, that gas ain't cheap, but 
Yeah, bro. So it's it's one of them things where I wanted to be like, oh well, if you want to experience the bus, you gotta come to Houston and experience the bus. Mm-hmm. I'll come to your city and pull up and try. But if you want the full experience of being a Sneaky East customer and saying, hey, I bought some off the Sneaky East food bus, you have to come to Houston. He gonna be like Pink's hot dog in California or Harold's chicken in Chicago, like what he said. Go about Harold. Hey man, look, hey, Boy, hey Harold's, man, you know how you good? Boy. With a with mild sauce, <laughs> salt and pepper, on oh man, God. so I don't know. Hey, you know, 2022 finna be crazy for me for sneaky for the whole hustle man crew. We got heat wave behind the camera today, man. So will you cater my wedding? See, bro, I knew you was gonna do this. <laughs> I don't care to weddings no more, but for you, dog, I'll cater your wedding, bro. I and once I got again, you. I didn't really, I just wanted to ask just because I know he doesn't cater weddings. I know that's a big question he always gets. So can you explain to us why you don't cater weddings? Because, um, thinking I'm Michael Jordan and I'm not. <laughs> like my homeboy Reeve Clothing or whatever, I normally always have his stuff on, but I got my other homegirl from New Jersey stuff on right now. My high club, you know what I'm saying? That's my dog. We're going to tag her. We're going to reach out. Yeah. Hey, if y'all in New Jersey, y'all need the high letters. We can. All, all up in Jersey, you. Philly, New York, she she be all up and down there. But um, like I said, bro, trying to be Superman and man, I took on like a three hundred person wedding, mm-hmm. and I barely had a regular stove cooking off and doing it. And they, I did it, I knocked it out, but it was a stretch, bro. Like I was asleep for like the next two days from being drained from that, and then I learned from that. So the next wedding I did, I was a little bit more prepared for it, but it was still the same draining feeling. So I told myself I need to be in an industrial kitchen with a team, a whole team, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, it should be to the point, if the next time I do a wedding, I need somebody prepping as far as the chops, all that other stuff and serving. I don't need to come out the kitchen as far as that. So until I get that team, bro, and that that was, I'm glad you said that, bro, because there was something else that was probably me. I wanted all the glory of doing all this shit by myself, but I can't, you know what Mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, when we when I when I when the bus is trapping, I'm not gonna be running the front. My homeboy J Rock is, you know okay. what I'm saying? He gonna be up there, and he got excellent customer service. Like when we was on, um, I don't know if y'all seen me doing a little smoke, the smoke uh, pop ups the other day. My homeboy, he, he owns a uh, he owns like a uh, not a smoke shop, but they they do a lot of things with the THC and the marijuana and whatnot. He had a whole little spiel every time customers come up. He was saying stuff like, "Yeah, we got the sneaky East, uh nachos, the best thing busting in Texas right now, fifteen for this." You know, he got yeah. he just had that yeah, lingo, yeah, whatever. Deliver. Yeah, man. So I, I already said him, bro. Like he's going to be the one that's going to greet all the customers at the front while I'm back here trapping. You can't see it now, but my stove is going to be right here. This is going to be my centerpiece for, you know what I'm saying, for me to create what I have to create. And like he said, this is collective, man. This is this is what my channel is about, building a brand and, and connecting the dots for all up and coming, even if you already established, because this man is very so much established, and he's still up and coming. Yeah, long way you know to go. But like he said, Hustle Man TV going to be his outlet to communicate with his fan base and the behind the scenes of Sneaky Eats and what it takes to be Sneaky Eats to have his food bus up and running. So that's what the show all about, man. Just putting the dots together. Like he said, he going to have a margarita man here. He going to have a treat lady here. Like he said, mile high clothes all the way up in Jersey. We're, we're two black men putting together the black community and black minis. And that's what we came here for today, man. So we appreciate you stopping by today. Appreciate y'all. Man, go ahead. Give me your Instagram one more time. Follow me on IG, Sneaky Eats. That's my main page. And then the the page for this bus is Sneaky Eats underscore food bus. My Twitter is Sneaky Eats food bus and whatnot. And just, you know what I'm saying, tap in with your boy. And like I said, it might not. uh, We literally broke it down to the skeleton. As y'all can see, we got the wires and stuff right now. But... The whole process of us building it up is going to be on Hustle Man TV. So y'all need to subscribe and tune in with him. You know what I'm saying? Like and subscribe. Get his follow account up so y'all can see how we're going. Because like I said, bro, I wanted everybody to be on this journey with me to see me come from the ground. Because everybody saw what I did, bro. I could have been there this four or five years ago, but it wouldn't have been right. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't mentally prepared for it. And it wouldn't it wouldn't have been right. But right now, I want to take y'all on the journey with me in building up this bus. And you'll be able to tune in with my boy and see everything.
Yeah, I heard it here first, man. But like always, y'all love the hustlers. I'm your boy, Hustle Man Mike. If you go broke, it's okay. Just don't let it stay that way. Until then, like, comment, subscribe. Or oh, to all Sneaky Eats guests, I have other food for y'all. So if y'all some foodies, this is definitely going to be a page for you. It ain't just Sneaky Eats. We're going to have some yeah, of the best food in Texas. People. And coming soon, 22, we're taking this show on the road, man.